All right, so we're gonna start putting this Versetta stone up. And um, to get started, I've installed products like this before, but never Versetta stone. So I'm pretty excited about the this. It looks like it's really, really good quality stuff. So we're gonna find out, but you gotta figure out some things um, before you get started. And one of those, you wanna figure out where your pieces are gonna lie so you don't end up with like a little sliver above the door here. So I gotta figure out where I wanna put my starter strip because the starter strip is the first thing you put on. Put the starter strip, then your water protection barrier, and then you can start putting your uh, stone up. So based on my personal preference, I decided to line my stone up with the bottom edge of the door. I felt like that would look the best. So it's important that those starter strips are equal distance from the bottom of the door to the top edge of the door on both sides. And that will reduce the amount of uh, issues you'll have when you get to that piece where you're gonna have to notch at the top of the door. It's also real, really important to make sure that those starter strips are nice and level. Um, it's just like siding or anything else, that first layer is gonna be the most important. You might think it's a bit ridiculous how many times I'm measuring to make sure that these starter strips are equal distance from the top edge of that door, but I've learned from my experience it's better to measure three or four times than have to take all the stone down and start over. Step one complete. Got our two starter strips set um, equal distance from the top of the door. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put up the water barrier here um, for behind it, and then we'll figure out uh, our starter piece. So I'm using 30 pound roofing felt here as uh, my water protection behind this. And this is to protect if any water is to get behind this stone, it can run down this and escape out the weep holes on the starter strip. Now in my case here, my door is located nine feet under an overhang. So the most water this is ever gonna see is when I'm doing spring cleaning and power washing my porch. But it's still an important step and you wanna make sure you do a good job at this. And I try to overlap the seams anywhere from 12 to 16 inches just to make sure uh, we're good and protected from any water. All right, starter strip done, water barrier tar paper done. All right guys, so to cut this, I just use my miter saw with a segmented diamond blade. I also put one on my table saw for any rip cuts. Obviously, if you're gonna be doing this um, a bunch, they make special saws that you can buy just for this purpose. But for a small project like this, it doesn't hurt to use your miter saw or your table saw. Um, you should wear a mask, however, you'll see that I did not. I was upwind, but it is a good practice to wear a mask to protect yourself from the fine dust. So you can see I'm knocking this interlocking tab off because I don't need it. This is gonna be in one of those small sections next to the door, and there's just some instances where you need to knock that off. So Versetta Stone makes universal corners, but in a situation like mine, when you're going up each side of a door and that space isn't very wide, you can't have finished edges on both sides. So what you can do is you can buy some Rust-Oleum, 
textured paint that matches your stone uh, the closest and then you can texture those ends and it gives you a really nice look and that's what I'm doing right now. When you're spraying those cut ends you want to face the finished side of the panel down so you don't get any overspray on it and then just kind of angle your spray down and it works out really well. So your first piece is going to sit in your starter strip. There's a groove that sits down in there and then you'll put a couple screws in the nailing flange. And then after your first piece is up, your additional pieces will just sit in the groove and then you put the screws or nails in that nailing flange. And you just wanna make sure as you work your way up, you're staying level. And in my case here, I'm working up both sides of the door, so I'm gonna keep measuring from the top of the door down to my each course to make sure I'm staying equal distance from the top of that door. So when I get there, and I cut that piece that's gonna go across the top, it's equal. All right, well that went pretty good. The next piece you can see um, where I decide to start it, I'm gonna have to notch this. This is the easiest way I thought to do it. So I'm gonna have to notch the next piece that'll go along. So I'm gonna get the other side brought up to the same height as this, and then we'll do that next row. That'll be the trickiest part, but I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. Since I had to rip the piece that goes across the top of the door, I decided to put almost like a miniature header in. So I used a 3 16 thick one inch angle and I sanded it down, drilled and countersunk some holes and then painted it black so that my stone would have a nice secure spot to sit on across the top of that door. The next thing, this is not necessary, but I took a piece of angle and I put it across the top of this door. And I just drilled and countersunk for some screws. There's enough gap behind there that the water, if any water, no water is going to get up in here, but if it did, it could, it could run down, get up past there, and then run out uh, above this brick mold. But this will give this, um, since I had to cut this piece that goes across, this will give this a nice secure, um, it's almost just like a header, uh, spot to sit. And then this part back here will space out the bottom of that stone, the required distance that it needs. This is 3 16 steel and that actually works perfect uh, because when you cut that bottom tab off, it'll want to it will want to swing in. So this will give it a nice stable uh, place to sit. So to make these right angle cuts, I use a combination of the table saw, the miter saw, and then ground off the remaining with a diamond blade grinder. And it worked out pretty well.
All right, guys, so you can see this is 3 16 angle. And I got it screwed in. That'll give this a nice, solid surface to sit on. And then the screws will obviously also help it. But you can see now it it's butts this bottom part of this out just enough. So it should be noted that the manufacturer actually calls for wire mesh and then a adhesive to hold the bottom of that um, stone in place. But I found in my case that uh, this worked out really well and gives me a nice secure place for that uh, stone above the door to sit. So to get further instruction on the lath and glue method, uh, check out Boro Building Products YouTube channel. They have some really good videos on how to install this Versetta stone. All right, so I know that this angle right there is 45. So all I gotta do for this next piece is measure from there up to where the angle starts, and then I know that's a 45 degree angle. All right, so now that we're getting up here higher, um, a 36 inch piece comes to almost right there. So that's just too small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a piece to go, you know, somewhere right in here and then I'll put a piece in the middle. So one thing you guys can do, if you gotta fit a piece in like there, you're gonna have a nice straight cut on one side and one thing you can do is take your hammer, the claw of your hammer, and just kind of nick this edge. And it just gives it a more natural look. And then paint it with your textured paint. And then it doesn't look so perfectly straight where it just kind of sticks out. So once I got up to this course right here, I had to knock the interlocking tabs off in order to fit these pieces in up at the top. And then the next row above that, I even had to take the bottom uh, tab off, and you'll see that here just in a minute.
All right guys, so when you get up to this top part, you're gonna have to get this tab, locking tab, ground off because you can't get this up high enough to slide in and then slide down and lock in place. And it's not gonna go anywhere once it's up in there anyway because it's a tight enough fit. The only other way you could do this is if you cut this smaller and then somehow trimmed it out, which I don't like. So I'm just gonna, I just ground that off and we're gonna fit that up in there. And then they make stainless steel uh, trim screws that you can always put through this if you're worried about it falling off. But I'll show you once it's up there, you're not gonna have to worry about it. All right, so if you want to drill a hole, I, you can do one of two things on your top rows. You can glue them, which is kind of what they uh, recommend. Um, but I don't like to do that because if I ever have to take it down, then it's stuck there and I can't get it. So I like to use stainless steel trim screws and you can't use a hammer drill to drill a hole through or you will bust it. So what I've found is if you use a regular drill with a hammer drill bit um, you can drill a hole through it pretty easily um, so you just one thing you want to do is however you decide to try it take a scrap piece and um, test it out before before you drill it on the piece you want because if it, the method you're using isn't working then obviously you need to try something different but what works for me is a regular drill with a hammer drill bit and I can get through it pretty easily all right, so that finishes up this entryway, and I can't uh, tell you how happy I am with the way it turned out. That cedar ceiling and this Versetta stone around the front door it looks absolutely amazing. And this was the first time I've used Versetta stone. I've used similar products, um, and I have to say that it was very user friendly, and it went up very, very well, uh, better than I expected, and I'm really pleased with it. So. If any of you guys are interested in doing something like this around your front door or adding a wainscoting to your, your building or your house, this stuff is user friendly and is definitely something you could DIY. Um, just with a, a few tools that you probably already have um, in, your, in your garage already if you do anything on your own. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully this video was helpful to somebody. I can tell you I'm going to be using this same stone on my fireplace once we get back inside. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'll bring you that when we get to it and we'll have a couple um, other things that will go along with that. I'm, I'm doing a custom uh, mantle so I'll show you how to attach that through the stone and all that uh, kind of good stuff. But appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications and we will catch you on the next video.